Hi, thanks for joining me. Tonight I want to do a review of the M&P9 pistol. This is the uh, older model M&P9, not the newer 2.0 that was released recently. Uh, the M&P line is one of my favorites. It's been around for a number of years now, and I don't think there's a lot of people that can say bad things about it. Um, so this is my first review um, ever, um, and my first gun review ever. So. Uh, Let's give it a shot tonight. See how well we do. Uh, first, let's do a quick uh, safety check into the magazine. Take a look inside. All clear. Okay, so let's start with the with the slide and barrel. Uh, both are stainless steel and covered in the melanite finish. Uh, when I received this pistol, it was still under melanite. Now, Smith and Wesson has changed to armornite. Um, as their uh, trademark brand name for the exact same finish from what I understand. Um, ergonomics on this pistol are uh, very nice. They follow the 1911 uh, grip angle. They use these palm swells. You get three palm swells with this pistol. This is the medium palm swell. They also have a small and large obviously and uh, the small is a little bit more narrow and obviously the large is a little bit thicker palm swell. The medium fits me very well. I have larger hands, uh, but I don't like the uh, larger palm swell. I like to be able to feel like I can get a better grip on it. The beaver tail on this is a little bit longer than other uh, uh, Striker 5 fired pistols and uh, allows you to get a really good high grip on it. Um, you can really plant your hand into it and, and get a good grip. Uh, the mag, or excuse me, the slide stop is ambidextrous. The magazine release is ambidextrous as well. You can swap it to whatever side you prefer. You do have a three position Picatinny rail. The sights are steel sights. Uh, they're drift adjustable and uh, very solid three dot sights. I don't know how well you can see them, um, but I really like these sights. I, I like that they're steel um, as opposed to some of the others that are plastic. Um, and I really like the design with the little flat cutout uh, for one-handed manipulations. It works really well, uh, especially being steel. You don't have to worry about them breaking. The uh, slide serrations are very positive. You can get a really good grip on them. Um, even when your hands are wet, you'll get a great grip. Uh, they're the standard kind of Smith & Wesson fishtail design that they use on most. The trigger is a hinge trigger. Uh, you might find some different ones. A lot of them have the little doohickey here in the center of the, the uh, trigger. Smith & Wesson has opted for the um, hinge trigger where it moves this little plastic piece out of the way as you squeeze the trigger for their trigger safety. Um, it works well. I, I don't have a preference necessarily. Uh, they both work for me. Uh, but this is the way Smith & Wesson has gone. Let's take a quick look at the magazine. This is the standard 17 round magazine from M&P uh, Smith & Wesson. Uh, steel mags. Uh, the followers have been great. The springs have never given me any problems. Hundreds of rounds for these. Um, I also store magazines that are full. I've never had a problem with them. Um, I also run some Pro Mags, and the Pro Mags have been just as reliable. I, I can't say anything bad about those either. Um, and then overall reliability, not of just the, the magazines, but the gun. Um, I can't remember any issues I've ever had with the M&P, um, and I think that's one of, why it's one of my favorites. Um, it's just been a solid pistol for me. Um, and I, I've shot the Glocks, and I own Glocks, and some of those others, but it's just one that... Uh, fits my hand very well, and that's why I like to stick to it. For some of the compliance states, you can still find uh, the uh, thumb safeties on the outside. Uh, I don't prefer thumb safeties, uh, but in some states uh, that require it, 
you can get that thumb safety as well. They do make a model with the thumb safety. Um, and overall, the finish is solid. Um, I've, uh, like I said, I've owned this for about four years and um, I've shot it, I've carried it, um, and the wear is unnoticeable. I also own an M&P 40 that was a police trade-in um, that doesn't show any real signs either. I'll do a review on that as well, just so you can see the hold up um, of the finish. But this has been in and out of holsters. It's been carried, it's been in the range, it's been in bags, it's been just about everywhere and it's shot a lot. And it's been uh, no real signs of wear at all. And, and I don't baby my guns, but I also don't destroy them either. Um, I like to keep them at least in uh, working condition and, and keep them up. Smith & Wesson shows an MSRP of this uh, for the M&P 9 at 569 on the website. Um, I found it, um, you know, other sites anywhere from... Uh, just under 400 up to 499 so it, it covers a lot of ground um, in the price if you look around you can find some really good deals um, especially since the M&P 2.0s have come out uh, people are obviously going that route for some of the newer guns but that leaves a, a these at a really great price to pick up um, and they are great functioning guns that honestly I have no nothing bad to say about them I, I i wish i did uh to make it sound like at least a more honest review but um i just am very fond of these and, and i love them a lot well thanks for joining me um please uh like and subscribe if there's um, anything else you'd like to see me address in my reviews as this is my first review please let me know in the comments below and i can uh, address those in future videos uh, like I said, please like and subscribe, and thanks for joining me.